my name is Rich Lossing. I am the past commander here at the Post. I would like to welcome you all to the Chester P. Tuttle American Legion Post 279. At this time, I would ask you all to please stand. The Honor Guard from Oxford Memorial American Legion Post 58 will post our colors. And salute. All right, I would ask you to please remain standing. It's my honor to introduce to you our commander, Commander Tom O'Rourke. Thank you, everybody. Uncover, remove your hats, please. We start all our meetings with Resolution 288, it's a call for designating a POW MIA empty chair at all official meetings of the American Legion as a physical symbol of the thousands of American POWs, MIAs still accounted for from all wars and conflicts involving the United States. This is a reminder for all of us to spare no effort to secure the release of any American prisoner from captivity and reparations of the remains of those missing let us rededicate ourselves to this vital endeavor. We pledge allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, the chaplain, Mr. Don Legacy, will lead us in a, in a prayer. Good afternoon. Oh, loving God, we gather today to welcome a visit from a wonderful organization, Wreaths Across America, as they make their annual pilgrimage from Harrington, Maine to the Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia, making stops along the way at schools, monuments, veterans' homes, and communities. We consider their stop here in Auburn as an honor, and we thank all the volunteers of this wonderful organization for their service to our country and to this noble cause. The theme of this year's pilgrimage is serve and succeed. The placement of these wreaths is intended to remember the fallen, honor those who serve, and to, touch the, and to teach the next generation the value of freedom. We ask you, almighty God, to guide them in the, as they continue their pilgrimage to keep them safe, shower them with your blessings so that they will know that you, O oh God, are pleased with the love they have for their comrades and this wonderful country. Their continued commitment to the noble endeavor speaks volumes to the love, respect, and steadfast admiration that these volunteers, their military comrades, and the appreciation of the American people 
have for those who serve, put themselves in harm's way, and are willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for the cause of freedom. Finally, our Lord, the world is in turmoil. We are at unrest in conflict in the Middle East, Ukraine, and elsewhere. That is liable to spill over and require this country to become involved to some degree. We ask you, O oh God, to watch over and protect our troops that are in deployment around the world and to continue and bless the United States of America and its people. All these things we ask today of you, almighty God, and everyone said, Amen and Amen. Next, we're going to have the national anthem sung by Tina Sundin. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud Twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous spy for the ramparts we watched was so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red Bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave? Thank you, Tina. You can all be seated now. <laughs> Welcome, Reach Across America. As Rich described me, Tom O'Rourke, I'm the commander of the Total Post, 279 American Legion, Auburn. We wanted to be hosting the escort to Arlington. I want to thank everyone for attending, and I'd like to recognize individuals from the escort. Can I have the Gold Star family stand up, please? President of the American Gold Star Mothers, Pam Stipple, stand up. <laughs> the American Legion Auxiliary National President, Lisa Williamson, please stand. <laughs> retired, retired Colonel Rico Playa, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> The founder of Wreaths Across America, Mr. Morrill Worcester, please stand. <laughs> and we have the Executive Director of Wreaths Across America, Mrs. Karen Worcester, please stand. <laughs> and I'd like to recognize uh, the officials from the town of Auburn. Uh, I don't see our city manager here, <laughs> town manager. <laughs> our fire chief, so we'll go with uh, school superintendent, Dr. Elizabeth Cup Chamberlain. <laughs> Deputy police chief, Scott Miller. 
Scott Mills, rather. Scott Mills. And the other recognition, uh, Lieutenant uh, Ken Charlton and uh, Brian Kennedy. They are the ones that uh, assigned basically to the, uh, what we call them, special operations on the fire department. Police, they call them special events. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, the American Legion was uh, charted by Congress in 1919 as a patriotic veterans organization, focusing on service to veterans, service members, and communities. The Legion involved from a group of war-weary vet war veterans of World War I into one of the most influential nonprofit groups in the United States. Membership swiftly grew to over one million, and local posts sprang up nationwide. Today, membership is nearly 3 million in more than 15,000 posts worldwide. The American Legion is built on a promise from men and women who swore with their lives to defend and to protect the United States through military service. The promise begins at enlistment, grows through training and discipline in the U.S. Armed Forces, and continues as veterans serving the community, state, and nation after discharge. <clears throat> Legionnaires constantly remind communities that freedom and prosperity come with a price, a price often paid in blood. They know the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. They raise money, put in the hours, and bring into existence monuments, memorials, to preserve the memories and incidents of our associations in all wars. The American Legion salutes the flag and asks others to respect the unity, freedom, and hope it represents. Veterans of the American Legion aim to strengthen the United States of America through programs, services, compassion, and actions that have proven vital, timeless, and life-changing for over a century. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite speeches. I, I give it a Veterans Day, I give it a Memorial Day. <laughs> It's easy to write this one. <laughs> to me, a veteran is someone who selfishly volunteers to protect that country. They come from all walks of life to answer the call of duty. They all join for different reasons or motivations, but all proudly wear the uniform. They charge in every battle knowing it may be their last, but they don't hesitate to do so. They vow to serve our country in times of need so we can continue living. Please take a moment to reflect upon the contrib contributions made by our military and their families, but without those sacrifices of life and limb, we would, have no, we would not have any country nor the freedoms we have enjoyed in the past. Freedoms are rapidly being eroded by the actions not only of woke politicians, many who have never served in the armed forces, but more disturbing, the loss of a free and unbiased press. A fight to defend freedom is far from over. Our vision, the American Legion strengthens America by improving the lives of our, of our veterans, the military and families, and their families. Mission statement, the American Legion strengthens our communities, states, and nation through programs and services for our veterans, the military, and their families. Our motto, veterans strengthening America. Our value principles, a veteran is a veteran. The American League embraces all current and former members of the military <coughs> and endeavors to help them transition into their communities. Selfless service, the American Legion celebrates all who contribute to something larger than themselves and inspires others to serve and strengthen America. American values and patriotism, the American Legion advocates for upholding and defending the United States Constitution, equal justice, an opportunity for everyone and discrimination against no one. Youth education, responsible citizenship, and honoring military service by observing and participation in patriotic and memorial events. Family and community engagement. The American Legion meets the unique needs of local communities. Advancing the vision. The American Legion educates, mentors, and leads new generations of Americans. <coughs> honoring those who came before us. The American Legion pays perpetual respect for all the past military sacrifices to ensure they are never forgotten by new generations. <clears throat> the American Legion's motto for uh, 2023 is uh, be the one. Uh, this is to promote 
the Legion's initiative to reduce the number of veteran suicides. Each day, 17, million, 17 veterans commit suicide. In a little, little poem I like to read, uh, it's called The Soldier. It is the soldier, not the minister, who has given us freedom of religion. It is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the campus organizer, who has given us freedom to protest. It is the soldier, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is the soldier, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag and allows the protester to burn the flag. <clears throat> Worcester Wreath Company. And I tell one little funny story. <clears throat> If you come out this driveway, you take a left. You go up to the stop sign, you take a right. It's Packard Shark Street. Go all that for about two, two and a half miles. You come to the city of Worcester, Massachusetts. <laughs> the largest city, second largest city in New England. And here's the funny part. When I'm reading all about the uh, wreaths across America, and I come across the Worcester Wreath Company, I go, I'm a retired firefighter, 34 years, the city of Worcester, Massachusetts, first responder. I thought I knew the pretty city of Worcester pretty good. All of a sudden, I come across this Worcester Wreath Company. I go, where the heck is that, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> Little icebreaker. <laughs> okay. Wreaths Across America is an incredible story that began in 1992 with Mr. Morrill Worcester. He started this tradition to honor our nation's veteran heroes. Mr. Worcester donated 5,000 leftover wreaths to begin this product, which were delivered to veterans' graves in Arlington National Cemetery. I'm not going to go into the whole thing. You people know more about this. I read as much as I could, but just a couple things. In, in 2007, Wreaths Cross America became a nonprofit organization. And just to recap, last year, 2022, 30 years later, 2.7 million veterans wreaths were placed nationwide at 3,702 locations. That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> More than 2 million volunteers participated. One third of these volunteers were children. The Reach Cross America mission, remember the fallen, honor those who serve, and teach the next, next generation, generation the value of freedom. Very important. I'm very touched. I've seen the video of uh, you people when you came by the schools here in Auburn. Uh, it, was, it just looked fantastic. I wish I could have been here, but uh, you know, I had to stay here for a couple of press interviews. <laughs> but uh, I'll, look, I'll see the video, though. Um, do you, okay. The Rich Cross America, their theme for 2023 is to serve and succeed. Well, <clears throat> what I want to recognize, I want to recognize the uh, Auburn Police Department. They have, uh, I believe it's 13 or 14 uh, veterans that run a police department and one dispatcher. Three of them uh, are still involved, one in the National Guard, one in the Reserves, and one in, I believe it's the Air National Guard or Air Reserve. Air Force, um, and, and these guys, these guys, you talk about serving your community. Police officers, firefighters, EMTs, first responders, I mean, that is, is it's right up there with being in, in the military, you know? And, and these veterans, you learn this stuff in the military, you know? When that 911 call comes in, you don't hesitate. You know? Off you go. You don't know what you're running into, and uh, God bless you guys, you do a great job.
I also got to say the same for the fire department because I was one of them. <laughs> well, next, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Drew Paycheck. He is the... He's the uh, Department of Massachusetts Vice Commander. Afternoon. Afternoon. I'd like to bring you the greetings of our Department Commander, Sandra Davis, who is unable to be with us today due to work commitments, but to let you know her model for the year is make it personal. And for me, this was good because I find the Wreaths Across America program to be personal. Because on Saturday, your wreath will adorn my father's grave at the Massachusetts Veterans Cemetery in Agua. Yeah. So thank you. So I'd like to take a moment, though, and start by thanking every member of every Gold Star family in this room. It is your service and your sacrifice to this nation that will never be forgotten. I'd also like to thank all of the truck drivers out there that are driving this convoy down the streets and everybody in blue, brown, green, black, gray, whatever color your department has chosen to wear this year. Thank you for everything you have done to escort this and make this get there in the safest, most timely, and most respectful manner you possibly could. Thank you. So now I'll stick to the script. We are gathered here today to remember that we are one nation. We are all proud Americans that live in a free society made up of many people, many walks of life. The freedoms we enjoy today have not come without a price. In cemeteries throughout this nation are men and women who gave part of their lives so that we can live in freedom and without fear. The wreaths before you represent our commitment as a united America to remember those who served. We want these holiday wreaths to symbolize our honor to those who have served and are serving in the armed forces. On behalf of this great nation and to their families who endure the sacrifice every day on your behalf. To our children, we want you to understand that freedoms that you enjoy today have not been free but have come with a responsibility that someday you yourself may choose to uphold. As a nation standing together, we can defeat terrorism, hatred, injustice. Thanks to our veterans, we have the freedoms to do just that. On behalf of the American Legion Department of Massachusetts, I wish to thank the great members of the Chester P. Tuttle Post, Unit, Squadron, and Riders of 279 here in Auburn, and the entire community for that matter, for their dedication and their the commitment to veterans all over the area. Thank you. <laughs> so at this time, I would like to bring up the department president of the auxiliary, Monique Connors. Thank you and welcome on behalf of the Department of Massachusetts American Legion Auxiliary. This is so very humbling. I have never actually been to an actual ceremony like this. And um, I, am, I am in awe. I thank every single one of you for coming. I think, thank every single one of you for volunteering in whatever way that you do. We are here for our veterans and their families and community. And I think every single one of us do that 110 times fold. I, I, I just, it just, I'm just in awe. So as Department Massachusetts Auxiliary, I would love 
to introduce your guest speaker today. And she is from the state of Alaska. <laughs> so she's getting, they're getting a lot colder weather back up there. But um, she is here for her second round in Massachusetts. She just came for a visit a little while ago and she's back with us today to talk with you today. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Uh, this is Lisa, Will Lisa Williamson, our national department, uh, national auxiliary um, president. Please, 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 please sit down. Um, I think some of you might have seen me around. This is my second uh, go around for the escort to Arlington. And I want to thank everybody for this opportunity. I made some great friends last year. And I want to personally thank Karen and Moral Wooster for allowing me to attend again this year and bringing my husband, Daryl. Sorry. I don't, I don't usually get choked up. Choked up. So um, this, this year, um, for those of you who don't know, the American Legion, we have the Legionnaires here. These are the ones that served, our veterans. Um, and then I'm a member of the American Legion Auxiliary, which are the wives, the daughters, oh, sorry, the spouses, the daughters, the grandmas, the granddaughters, and, and so the, the female contingent that supports our, our Legionnaires. Then we have the sons of the American Legion, which my husband is a member of, and it's the male descendants of those, of those Legionnaires. And my husband serves in honor of his father who served in World War II. And, and the neat part about it is at our national organization, we have a national commander, Dan C. Hafer. Um, I've talked with uh, Karen about, um, about him a little bit. Um, he served as a lieutenant in the Navy as the chaplain. So they've got a little connection there. And um, then we have a Sons of the American Legion, his na national commander, he is from Maryland, J.R. Hall. For the first time ever, our national three leaders are walking the walk in the same direction, and we are all focusing on veteran and military suicide and embracing the Be the One uh, mission that the Legion has. Uh, it, it has never happened before that we had the same focus. Um, those of you who have seen me around might know me, might be riding with me. I'm a little bit of a joker. I like to have fun. I like to work hard. But so for me to take on this very serious subject, um, hopefully will um, create a bigger impact because it is a serious subject. And, and the big thing that the Be The One is, is what we're trying to do is let people know, one, it's okay to not be okay, and two, it's all right to ask for help. So basically what I'm asking all of you, you don't have to go to all the trouble and, and figure out exactly, none of us are, well, at least I'm not, mental health uh, professionals, but to ask a veteran how they're doing to listen to what they're, what they're saying. And that may be listen to what they're not saying and listen to their, their body language. And if you see that they're in crisis, to reach out and dial 988, which is the new veteran crisis line. It's been in existence a little over a year. Whole lot easier than learning a bunch of 800 numbers. So um, that is, that's um, where my focus is this year. And as a family, with the Legion and the SAL and the Auxiliary walking in the same direction, we're hoping for triple the impact. I am a Blue Star mom. I hope never to be a Gold Star mom. But this trip is about our Gold Star families. And so I'm hoping that maybe the Be The One mission can help ensure that that happens. So I think that many of you who, who are traveling here know that there's 12 bouquets on each one of the wreaths and that there's a significance, they represent something. But did you know that the red bow, it, rec it, it, it represents great sacrifice. And to me, that's the Gold Star families. You guys have sacrificed so, so much. So what is, 
Let me tell you a little bit about the Legion. Uh, Commander here told us about a little bit about the Legion, but one of my probably near and dear subjects is the lobbying efforts that the Legion does. For those of you who don't know, the original GI Bill was written by a Legionnaire. He credits the auxiliary as having uh, um, uh, its passage because we were the ones writing the letters telling our members of Congress to, uh, to please pass this bill. Well, there is a bill right now called the Love Lives On Act of 2023, and it's in support of the Gold Star families, especially the Gold Star wives. And what it is is for those Gold Star wives who might find love again afterwards, that their benefits that they earned and sacrificed for are not stripped away simply because they want to remarry. So if you guys want to write your congressman, If you want to write your congressman, please write in support of the Love Lives On Act of 2023. I think that we can all agree that the missions of, of Reese across America, the American Gold Star Mothers, and the American Legion family all parallel one another. So it was, it's a, it was a natural fit. Last year, I got to travel when I was at Reese across America and meet their, their national president at the time. And now the American Legion Auxiliary has a formal memorandum of understanding with the American Gold Stars moms, where we work together to, work to, to help our veterans, our military, and their families. We did the same thing with Reese across America. Karen came to our national convention. We signed a formal memorandum of understanding because our missions are so similar and we can only help each other. So I just want to ask, some people have asked me, why do you do this? I've been traveling for, I travel for a year as the national president. I'm going to be traveling 310 days this year. My husband's probably appreciating that. <laughs> but I want to, people say, why do you do this? For one, it's one year. Many of you signed on the dotted line. For four years, I can do one. I can do one. So if he, all of you veterans would please rise. Please, veterans, please rise. You act, the act of duty, act of duty, please rise. Please stay standing, please stay standing, please stay standing. Act of duty, please rise. And those families, please rise. You are why I do what I do. You are why I travel 310 days a, a year. I absolutely love this, this, Reese, go ahead, you can be seated. I absolutely love being a part of this escort. Um, uh, and I, I appreciate the time. I appreciate you allowing me some, some time to talk about Be The One. I do wanna read one little letter that I saw today when we were in York, a little letter written by Peyton Looking at the, the handwriting, I'm guessing about six years old. His, he was, his artwork was displayed at York High School. We were there just a few minutes ago. And this, I think, goes directly to you Gold Star families. Dear families of veterans, thank you for your service and your sacrifice. We are thankful for our freedoms, and we wish you happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're getting close, we're getting close. I know you wanna get back on the road here. Um, what I would like, if I could get one representative, one representative from Gold Star family to stand up. Um, just one, please stand up. Just need one, that's all. No, 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 I'm sorry, I just want one from each family to stand up. Yeah, sure, one from each family, please stand up. All right, our, our auxiliary um, has a little gift for you. So let me ask you this. If your loved one served in the USS Army, I mean, I'm sorry, in the US Army, please raise your hand. I guess they're not ready. <laughs> no, you can keep your hand up because they're gonna come find you here. Come on, come on, this way, down the middle. Oh, down the middle? Okay. Down the middle.
They're coming. They are coming. We have more. Do we have one? Okay. Um, Ellie? Oh, we'll get to that. Yes, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, so if your loved one served in the United States Marines, please raise your hand. All right, if your loved one served in the United States Navy, raise your hand. Oh, I'm sorry, we have another Marine over here. I'm sorry. Oh, hoorah. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, Ellie, do you have a marine one over here? <laughs> All right, have we covered that now? Thank you. All right. If your loved one served in the United States Navy, please raise your hand. I think there's only one though. We would say wings that are coming. All right, and if your loved one served in the United States Air Force, please raise your hand. Well, it's a long wait. <laughs> I, I think we've covered them all. I don't think there are any Coast Guard or... Um, um, what about you have now, our Space Force? Yeah. My grandson just got in, so it's great. Uh, on behalf of us, thank you so much we, uh, for your sacrifice and your, you know, what you do. So thank you so much. I'd like to thank all our special guests that are here. Uh, of course, the. Uh, Auburn Police Department for what they've done, Reefs Across America, Gold Star Families, all these. This has been, uh, boy, it's brought a tear to my eye a couple times. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm going to turn this over now back to our commander, and we're going to do a closing ceremony. Thank you. Not quite yet. We have reads to present. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the number one wreath we're going to give out is going to have the Gallant boys and daughter, Ginger.
The number one wreath we're going to present is to Phyllis Gallant. She's a World War II veteran of the U.S. Navy. She's sitting right here. She is currently 102 years old. Go, girl. <laughs> Phyllis joined the Navy after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. After completing basic training and training as a seaman first class, she served as a licensed practical nurse at the Naval Hospital Operating Base in the Hospital Corps. Phyllis exited the Navy in 1946 with the rank of pharmacist third class. For over 54 years, she has served as a post chaplain or assistant chaplain. Phyllis also was a member of our colored guard and she proudly carried the American flag in parades and whatever, whatever, whenever we needed her, Phyllis was there. God bless you, Phyllis. And she still comes over to post and she has a cause light with the boys. <laughs> Oh! I just got the hand signal. Our, our Christmas party was sad. She had two cause lights. I hope you weren't driving. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, boys. She's also the pride of Auburn. Happy, Happy Erickson, please bring the wreath, second wreath, forward. <laughs> wreath number two is going to go to William Bill McLean. Go. <laughs> Bill McLean is a Bill McLean is a combat veteran of the Vietnam War. He has been serving as a chief finance officer at the Chesapeake Tuttle Post for the past 25 years. He has been instrumental in keeping this post operating smoothly every day. In March 15, 2019, we had a fire that destroyed this building. This is a brand new building. It was, it was built and we christened it uh, in the fall of 2021. And Bill was very instrumental in getting the financing and everything else, along with Rich Larson, a past commander. These, these two guys are the ones that put this building together. You know, did all the financing, all the planning. Just to keep the Legion Post going. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. We all appreciate it. Happy you present that wreath to Mr. McLean. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Our third wreath. It's going to go to Tuttle. Right. Uh, our third wreath uh, is going to be going to the Chester P. Tuttle. He was the first American resident to die in World War I. This building is named after him. He was killed in France in uh, 1918, and his body was brought back home and laid to rest at Hillside Cemetery in Auburn uh, in 1921, which is probably half a mile up the road. Um, so if the wreath is over there, I will take it, and we'll make sure we get up to uh, Chester, Chester's grave. Um, you want to all please stand? As we once again honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom and liberty. Uh, Trevor Brooks, Brooks, we have a, a freshman from Auburn High School who's going to play the taps. Hand salute. <laughs>
So this ends our uh, ceremony here. We want to thank the Reese Across America once again for coming to our post. Um, it was truly an honor. Thank you. Although I would like to acknowledge the um, Patriot Guard and also the uh, American Legion Riders for their flag line that they put out here for us. So thank you so much.